Oh, just barely felt him. Holy cow, look at him go. <laughs> that one was so funny. That guy, he was, oh, look at him go. Man, oh man. <laughs> and I wonder why they call me Mr. Chronomid. I just love it. Uh, some people think it's like watching paint dry, but if you do it right, you get such sensitive hands. Oh man, just you get to feel the take. You just feel that little the tightening of the line. That's all it takes. You just set it up. Man, they hit it. Oh, and there's a few mayflies on the water too. I see a few adult mays, which is always nice. Boy, this guy's a little guy, but boy, what a scrapper. Whoa. Okay, let's release this guy without harming him. Marble sock, I should be. Tip him upside down. Okay, let's review the setup once more. I have this Marriott setup. It's a it's a nice five-way rod with the reel. I've got some clear intermediate sink line. This intermediate sink has a real slow sink rate, probably equal to a type one or type two sink. I have some fluorocarbon tippet right from the fly line back to the fly. Just put on about three feet of fluorocarbon. It's five pound. Again, bury it to the size of the fish you're catching. And of course, our nice little chronomid that we showed you on the bench. So if you ever come into this lake, Larchwood Lake, or any lake similar to it that have the smaller fish, ideal setups, four and five weight rods. I'm noticing quite a few mayflies on the water now, the Calabatus mayflies, sitting up on the top, a couple of spent wings. And I've seen a couple of fish boil behind me up in the channel. So I think what I might do is Try a few more with the chronomid. If I don't catch any more, I think we might even try some, some wet line. I'll put on a little beadhead mayfly nymph and run it through there. And if I don't have any luck with that, I might even try some dry because they have been boiling. So we'll wait and see. Try this chronomid for a bit. And if not, again, be observant. I see a few maize on the water. And now I'm going to change over to a little beadhead mayfly. And we'll see if, see if we can get something with that. I think the big key to being on the water is be observant. I've seen the mayflies on the top, and now I am going to change. I'm going to bring this chronomid in and change over to a nice little beadhead mayfly. There are some maize moving around. There are some adult mayflies laying on the water. So again, just be observant and change with the times. We've got some early on chronomids. Now we'll change over to mayflies. a little bit of how I'm going to actually fish this mayfly. There's a few fish moving over in this area and I have my intermediate sink on. What I'll do is I'll let out as much line as I can cast and you know it's probably whatever 50 feet. You don't have to cast far. Guys are always worried about oh I've got to make a big cast. You don't have to make big casts. Just get it out whatever you're comfortable with. Make the cast and now I'm going to do a count. I'm probably in again 12, 8 to 12 feet of water out here. So I'm going to let that line sit for a while. I know it's slinking down nice and slow. And my last count was about 30 seconds. So I'll just keep counting and counting in my head until I reach 30 seconds. Once I've reached the 30 seconds, I'm going to start different retrieves. My first retrieve I'm usually going to use is a nice figure eight retrieve, nice and slow. Not too fast. I just want to see if I get any hits and then I'll actually leave it for a bit. And again, three or four more figure eights and let the fly sit. Another retrieve to use is if you don't have any luck with the figure eights, is speed it up a little bit. Some people do over, overhand pulls of about six inches or straight through pulls of about six inches and let the fly sit. Again, straight through pull or an over the finger pull. They both work just fine. Try those different retrieves, get that line out, allow it to sit, and it's not bad if you kept catch bottom once in a while. If you do catch bottom, you're at the right depth. So make sure you remember that count and keep using that same count when you start hooking up fish. We had seen a lot of mayflies on the water, but the beadhead mayfly had a couple of hits, but I wasn't hooking them up. So I thought, ah, oh, since there was a lot of mayfly nymphs moving around, I went to the ostrich hurl mayfly. It's a nice little pattern. It works really well when there's, when there's mayflies cruising around the calabatus. And this guy here popped it. And it was funny, you know, I was using a real slow figure eight retrieve, and it wasn't until I sped it up that he took it. Oh man, this guy has got some meat to him. He's a nice fish. 
boy, oh boy. These are tough fish right now. What a great little lake. Largewood Lake, if you want to come out and catch a whole bunch of fish of a good size, like these are not, I mean, these aren't the trophies that you can catch around here. But, oh no! And I lost him. There he goes. Did he snap me? No, he didn't. There he goes. Right. And that one was a nice fish. Gee whiz, I want to show everybody. That would have been, you know, that's the 18 inch range. One of some of the bigger ones you're going to catch in here.